the striped bass arrive in early spring, the bluefish around Mother's Day, bluefin tuna in June, false albacore in August, the same month as the Atlantic bonita. Then the striped bass and bluefish come back through in the fall. The tourists in Washashores may flock to Cape Cod in summer, but ask the local anglers and captains. They'll tell you, any season is our season. Just uh, tell us first, like, who you are, what's your whole story here? Hold on. I mean, that could go anywhere. So Where am I looking? You'll be looking straight into, straight the, into the camera. Straight into the camera, okay. All right, my name's Colin Lundholm. I'm the owner operator of Cape Star Chargers. I grew up in Martha's I grew vineyard. up, I was I raised in Plymouth, and I years. currently live in San Francisco. fish and hunt. This is Cape Cod in a nutshell an inescapable chorus of watermen. Professional guides, mates, marine scientists, and citizens from Menemsha to Chatham, all chattering about tides and migrations and what's biting. Um, Salt water, fresh water, it's all here. November. Okay, one at a time, please. Striped bass is one of the best fisheries we have here. They uh, migrate. In the early spring, end of May, they're showing up, sometimes as early as April. The peak of it is the end of May, early June. We get a lot of big fish coming up from the Chesapeake. We can find them in the fresh water. They go into the ponds, get landlocked in the wintertime, catch them all winter. You can catch them through the ice. They're one of the most fun fish to catch. Top water, subsurface, whatever. They're always here, they're always fun. I love tuna fishing. I, I work so hard all summer with the inshore game. Basically, when I transition over to tuna, it, it just feels like less work, and you know I'm out there having fun and really doing what I love to do. That one that hit yours was larger. <laughs> I switch back and forth from the light tackle spin to the big rods with live bait because the, I do whatever the weather dictates. In Cape Cod, life on the water is the rule, not the exception. Half do it for work, half do it for pleasure, but both love it equally. Cape Cod, appropriately enough, is a hook-shaped landmass on Massachusetts' southeastern corner. Where the mainland ends, the Cape begins, kicking off 400 miles of shoreline. It's one week until Labor Day, the official end of summer. In seven days, Cape Cod will drastically change its office hours. But guys like Joe and Cullen don't hibernate. The fish start migrating because New England has a massive migration of multiple species that starts in the springtime. We'll get the striped bass first, the bluefish come Mother's Day. 
Bonita next, Albacore in the fall, and then the reverse migration. They all start heading back down south. Sure, you can hunt deer and ice fish, but right now it's summer, so we'll labor until that day comes. Atlantic Bonita are beloved on the Cape. A fun battle on light tackle. Good eating, and lucky for us, photogenic. Joe is fishing Lambert's Cove on Martha's Vineyard. The birds got the memo first. We're running and gunning, sight fishing. You see the fish come up, start breaking on the bait. The birds will come in. You get over to them as quick as you can without spooking them out. Quick cast into the school. Fish do the rest of the work for you. Working the jig up top, Joe reels it in fast. Bonita like quick moving bait that's on the run. The Bonita tend to show up usually mid-August, early August. They're here till mid to late October. They're a fun fish, they're fast, they're hard fighting. You use light gear, seven foot tackle. 15 pound test, 20 pound test. They'll give you good action the whole time. They're good eating as well, which is a huge bonus. Bonita we caught, we were able to throw it on ice as soon as we got it, take it out to the beach, Play right there on the tailgate, make some poke, some sashimi, cook some right on the beach grill. Nothing goes to waste on them. They're great fish to use for a lot of purposes. <laughs> Kill it, so what's left after the Bonito gets sashimi? Bait. Perfect for the sandbar sharks that cruise the beaches. Brown sharks are actually known as a sandbar shark. They're actually a relative of the bull shark, but much more docile. People see pictures of them recently. A lot of people have been fishing for them now. They fight really hard. They are protected, so you can't keep them, but you're allowed to fish for them. There's a stick boat in Sandwich waiting to chase giant bluefin. And they're not the only creatures in the boil.
This is Captain Tyler McAllister. The Cynthia C is his stick boat, which is to say harpoon boat. Departing from Sandwich, the 38 foot down east heads out in search of giant bluefin. One boat, okay. You don't see that one running over there? You got a color? Joe Finley is the wingman in the sky. He's the spotter on the lookout for tuna-shaped silhouettes. Yo, pick me up. We got uh, school of 10 lined up. Biggest one's on the left. 12 boat legs to 130. The humpbacks are up top, feeding. The bait pod makes a break for it, turning the water into a spidered windshield. But a mouth that size doesn't miss much. I think that was a tuna fish right over there that pushed. But it didn't stay up long enough. Sometimes it's the experienced captain, stick boat, and spotter plane that win the day. And sometimes it's the underdog, this guy. His trophy catch has a beam darn near as wide as the vessel. off of Chatham and we're just fishing live bait and we're letting our lines, we're stemming the tide, letting our baits get back into the current and that's where those fish are feeding and holding. Though their numbers are greater in spring, striped bass are still hanging around. In summer, stripers avoid the warmer waters. They're more likely to inhabit areas closer to inlets where cool ocean water brings down the temperature. During the fall bait fish migrations, when the water is thick with herring and mullet, a striper can be more casual in its attack because there's always a second chance. But this time of year, when bait fish aren't as plentiful, stripers prefer to ambush their prey. Wagon Bank, Cape Cod's richest bluefin grounds.
Cullen heads to Stellwagen Bank when bluefin tuna are the target. This marine sanctuary is the bullseye. We have an area, it's called Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary. These fish go and they spawn in the Mediterranean, in the Gulf of Mexico, and then they travel all the way up to the northern part of New England. They're coming here to feed on herring, sand eels, menhaden, mackerel, anything that's gonna fatten up these fish and help them swim long distances to go spawn. In Cape Cod, bluefin are the blue ribbon big game challenge. You want on? Few fish fight with this level of speed, strength, and stamina. These behemoths travel in groups, in numbers ranging from a dozen to a hundred. Oh, we wasn't one of those bigger models, man. <laughs> there was some big fish in there. Bluefin are often found on the surface, crashing bait amid whales, birds, and even striped bass. Spinning tackle makes for a fun fight. We have one of the best light tackle bluefin fisheries in the world. We have people coming from South Africa, uh, Japan, New Zealand, all to come here to try to land these bluefin on spin tackle, specifically topwater stuff. Light tackle, stick baits, poppers, and occasional jig, but when you go around the world and people are targeting bluefin in different areas, the feeding habits that we have here permit us to catch them on spin gear, whereas they don't do so in other parts of the world. A lot of the fish we have are feeding on top, which gives you a visual game to target them on spin tackle. Our bluefin tuna stocks are looking very healthy. We're catching our quota very quickly each year, which shows that there are a lot of big, healthy, breeding-sized bluefin tuna migrating to Cape Cod in the New England area. Through tagging data, we've seen that these small fish that we're releasing while charter fishing are all living and swimming weeks after our release date. If you take care of these fish both sides, you give them a good cool down and you swim on them both sides and make sure they're having a lot of kick left in their tail, there should be no issues with mortality on these fish. Labor Day has arrived. Now the metamorphosis begins. The ferries lighten. The snowbirds take flight. The Chad Tuckets return to school. Joe, Cullen, and the rest of the year rounders will still be here. For the local watermen, nothing stops. Falling leaves and winter breeze are little more than ticks of the clock for a pursuit that doesn't end.